dangerous to our country and our privacy. Laws in China allow the Chinese Communist Party to compel companies like TikTok to share data with them, whether the companies want to or not. And this means that the CCP has the ability with TikTok to compromise device security, maliciously access Americans' data, promote pro-communist propaganda, and undermine our nation's interests. This is extremely troubling. Beijing, China should not have the control over Americans that TikTok gives them. It is my hope that if enacted, this legislation will force divestment of TikTok so that Americans will be able to continue to use this platform without the risk that it's being operated and controlled by Beijing, China. However, even if TikTok is divested, China and other foreign adversaries will still be able to acquire vast amounts of Americans' data. That's because we place no restrictions on data brokers who sell data to, to them, and that must stop as well. I look forward to the House considering next week legislation that I introduced with Chair Rogers that would stop this from happening. We must begin to hold big tech accountable for transforming the information superhighway into a super spreader of harmful contact, invasive surveillance practices, and addictive and damaging design features, all with the goal of collecting more data. We must enact a comprehensive data privacy bill so that we finally give Americans control over how their data is used and collected. So I want to thank Representative Krista Morthy and Gallagher for their bipartisan work on this bill, which unanimously passed out of the Energy and Commerce Committee last week, and I urge my colleagues to support H.R. 7521, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from New Jersey reserves. The gentlewoman from Washington is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield a minute and a half to the gentleman from Wisconsin, Mr. Gallagher. Thank you. Uh, TikTok is a threat to our national security because it is owned by ByteDance, which does the bidding of the Chinese Communist Party. We know this because ByteDance leadership says so and because Chinese law requires it. This bill therefore forces TikTok to break up with the Chinese Communist Party. It does not apply to American companies. It only applies to companies subject to the control of foreign adversaries defined by Congress. It says nothing about election interference and cannot be turned against any American social media platform. It does not impact websites in general. The only impacted sites are those associated with foreign adversary apps, such as TikTok.com. It can never be used to penalize individuals. The text explicitly prohibits that. And it cannot, cannot be used to censor speech. It takes no position at all on the content of speech, only foreign adversary control, foreign adversary control of what is becoming the dominant news platform for Americans under 30. This is a common sense measure to protect our national security. I urge my colleagues to support this critical bipartisan legislation. The gentlewoman reserves uh, from Washington. I'll now recognize the gentleman from New Jersey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield three minutes now to um, Mr. <laughs> the gentleman from uh, Illinois, Mr. Roger Christenworthy, who's the Democratic sponsor of the bill. Thank you, Chair Pallone. Thank you, Mike Gallagher, my partner on this bill. Thank you to Kathy McMorris Rogers. Uh, thank you to all the members of the Select Committee. First, this bill is not a ban, and it's not about TikTok, it's about ByteDance. Let me tell you about ByteDance. ByteDance is a 100% owner of TikTok. ByteDance is controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. In fact, the editor-in-chief of ByteDance is the secretary of the Chinese Communist Party cell embedded at the very highest ranks of, of the company. And he has been charged with making sure that TikTok and all products of ByteDance adhere to, quote, correct political direction. This particular bill, ensures that ByteDance divests itself of the vast majority of the ownership of TikTok. Our intention is for TikTok to continue to operate, but not under the control of the Chinese Communist Party. Secondly, this divestment requirement is not new. It's not without precedent. When the app Grindr, a popular LGBTQ app, was acquired by a Chinese company and the United States government determined that sensitive data of LGBTQ members of the military and U.S. government officials got into the hands of the Chinese Communist Party, they required divestment. This happened quickly. Why? Because Grindr was a very valuable social media company. 
The same is true with regard to TikTok, and there will be no disruption to users, just as there was with Grindr. Third point. Unfortunately, when TikTok has appeared before Congress, whether it's before the House Energy and Commerce Committee or otherwise, it has not been candid, my friends. It has not been candid. First, TikTok said its data is not accessible to China-based ByteDance employees. False. China-based employees routinely access this data, even unbeknownst to employees of TikTok USA. In addition, TikTok said its data will not be weaponized and has not been weaponized against American citizens. Again, false. Published reports have shown that TikTok data, geolocation data, has been used to surveil American journalists who reported on problems with Chinese-based employees having access to American user data. Finally, last week, under the leadership of the chairman, chairwoman and the ranking member, they brought up for consideration our bill before the House Energy and Commerce Committee. On the morning of that vote, TikTok delivered a push notification and a pop-up to thousands of users across the country. They used geolocation data targeting minor children to then force them to call congressional offices in order to continue using the app. And in doing so, these children called and they asked the question, what is Congress and what is a congressman? This influence campaign illustrates the need for this bill. Thank you, and I yield back. Gentleman yields, and I'll uh, recognize uh, in the gentleman from New Jersey reserves. And I'll recognize the gentleman from Kentucky. I recognize uh, data privacy champion, Mr. Warren Davidson from Ohio for three minutes. I thank the, the gentleman, gentleman for Ohio yielding uh, time. Uh, I think it's important that we solve the right problem. The gentleman from New Jersey, uh, who isn't actually opposed to the bill, seems to have identified the real issue, which is data privacy. So I think it's important that we solve the correct problem. Uh, our problem is all these companies, social media, otherwise, your car, your phone, you name it, it's surveillance. Uh, the spying that goes on to American citizens does need to be addressed, and it should be addressed by the, the Energy and Commerce Committee. I've long pleaded with, with members of both sides of the aisle to pass H.R. 4 to reclaim the privacy rights that are so deeply infringed in our country. And by avoiding that problem, we take away the energy and momentum to address the root issue. Frankly, the people uh, sponsoring this bill today claim that the real issue is ownership. But who owns this company? It's not 100% owned by ByteDance. 60% of it's owned by investors, including American investors. 20% are owned by uh, the founders. And 20% are owned by employees, over 7,000 employees. The company's headquarters is not in China. It's in Singapore. And the American user data isn't housed in China. It's housed in Texas controlled by a database owned by Oracle. The administration seems to believe that they can ban the export of Americans' sensitive data, not just on TikTok, but on all platforms, because they just issued an executive order banning the export. Now, I wish this was the bill that Pramila Jayapal and I have sponsored that we were moving. The Fourth Amendment's not for sale, uh, past judiciary, but its complement to prevent foreigners from buying it uh, would would also uh, address the privacy concerns. So if we think we can address the privacy concerns, what's left to address? Frankly, content moderation. Remember before Elon Musk bought the crime scene at Twitter? It was all a conspiracy theory that these algorithms were silencing and canceling people. You guys are crazy. No, when Elon Musk bought Twitter, he did keep it operating with 80% fewer employees, but what we found is a lot of the employees were trying to do content moderation, shape who sees what and how they see it, which algorithms are used, how does it promote certain people and, and filter others. So really what's, what you're saying here is if you're not fully engaged with America's three-letter agencies in content moderation, we plan to TikTok you. And this bill isn't just limited to TikTok. It's a coercive power that can be applied to others. Apps like Telegram, Tor, things that provide privacy uh, would be targeted by this bill. Perhaps Tether, 
one of the things that they can't control as a monetary system. And when you look at companies, if it enables one user to see content that isn't approved, it's subject to a $500 fine per user. 500 million. 30 seconds? 30 seconds. So this is, this is meant to be able to take out anything, including email, where it's one user sees it. So it could target an infinite number of companies, um, but not an infinite number of places. And so for that, I do applaud the work that was done to back off from the Dystopian Restrict Act. But this is essentially the a down payment on the Restrict Act. The Restrict Act, uh, it, it, I encourage everyone to look it up. But this is what the, it, the, the administration really wanted to do, what members of Congress on both sides of the aisle wanted to do, is to create a bigger surveillance state. And that's what the Intel Committee wants to do with Gentleman's FISA. Gentleman's time has expired. Is bigger. We have to shrink it and protect Fourth Amendment right to privacy. I yield. Reserve. Gentleman from Kentucky reserves. Now recognize the gentlewoman from Washington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is not true that this is a down payment on the Restrict Act, not interested in the Restrict Act. With that, I um, yield 30 seconds to the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Latta. Gentlemen's recognized. Yielding. Mr. Speaker, the CEO of TikTok appeared before the Energy and Commerce Committee and admitted to me during questioning that ByteDance has access to U.S. data. This should be an alarm to every TikTok user. There is no reason why the Chinese Communist Party should be in control of an app that can access information on a user's phone. And because companies who are owned or linked to the Chinese Communist Party are forced to comply with their laws, ByteDance and its employees are taking orders from this communist regime. This is not a ban, but provides communist-controlled ByteDance, the parent company of TikTok, a choice. If ByteDance divests expired. their ownership of TikTok, TikTok would be available to its U U.S. users. I urge all my colleagues to support this legislation. I yield back the balance of my time. Reserve. Gentle lady reserves, and I'll recognize the gentleman from New Jersey. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I yield two minutes now to the Speaker Emeritus, Ms. Pelosi. The gentlewoman is recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I thank the gentleman for yielding and for his leadership on this very important issue, and I thank the distinguished chairwoman uh, of the Energy and Commerce Committee and associate myself with her remarks, as well as with Mr. Pallone's. I thank Mr. Christian Morphy and Mr. Gallagher, Chairman Gallagher of the Select Committee uh, on China for their great leadership, bringing this legislation forward uh, to the Committee of Jurisdiction, Legislative Jurisdiction. It, Mr. Chair, I have a few points to make, uh, and it's interesting to hear this respectful debate. First of all, this is not a ban on TikTok. I'm a grandmother of teenagers. I understand the entertainment value, the educational value, the communication value, the business value for some business on this. This is not an attempt to ban TikTok. It's an attempt to make TikTok better. Tic-tac-toe, a winner, a winner. And here's what I have to say. The people of China have come forth. The Tibetans have come forth and said on TikTok in China, they are suppressed. They cannot put their message out. Not only that, the Chinese government misrepresents the situation in Tibet. And Hong Kong, well, let me just tell you about Hong Kong. During the Taiwan election, TikTok, TikTok into Taiwan that the Uyghurs, of whom there is, on whom there is a genocide exercised by the Chinese government, they have told the people in Taiwan that the Uyghurs like that genocide. And, the, and they told them that the people of Hong Kong like the destruction of their democracy. They don't frame it that way, but that's their message. And again, suppressing the communication from Tibet. And then just people, yesterday on the steps, we heard from the Taiwan people, we, t the, we heard from the Tibetans, we heard from the Hong Kong, and we heard from a woman whose husband was arrested because of his communication with somebody with a shared view. So this is controlled by the Chinese Communist government. But forgetting that, if you can, I can't, think of this. Ladies' time has the expired. Algorithm, the Chinese government will control the algorithm. They can change it any time. Does the Coming gentleman the from United New Jersey States, wish to allocate more time? I urge a yes vote. Thank you. Gentleman from New Jersey reserves, and I'll recognize a gentleman from Kentucky. I recognize my friend and fellow colleague on the Judiciary Committee, Mr. Bishop from North Carolina, for four minutes. 
Gentleman's recognized for four minutes. Mr. Speaker, this is not the first time that re restricting speech has been pursued in the interest of national security. In fact, in five days' time next Monday, I'll go to the Supreme Court for the first time I've attended uh, an, an oral argument in the case of Murthy versus Missouri, the case where agents of the, from the White House and the Department of Justice and other federal agencies embedded themselves with American social media companies to manipulate what could appear on social media, expression by the American people. Described by the lower court as the most massive attack on free speech in U.S. history. And even as that pens for a decision by the Supreme Court, Congress would, in this legislation, say, in effect, hold my beer. I don't use TikTok. I think it's ill-advised to do so. Members of this body are famous on TikTok, and I think that's unwise. But I respect the choices of 170 million users in the United States. In the, international, uh, the Trump administration attempted to ban TikTok in 2020, and it was held that it couldn't do so in two court decisions because under the International Emergency Economic Powers Act are subject to the Berman Amendment, passed in 1988 by this body, to provide that in the interest of uh, dealing with hostile foreign powers, the President can do all sorts of things with respect to commerce, but cannot ban the free flow of information across international boundaries. I've heard that described as a gap in the law, but it's a feature, sir. It's not a bug. Th this change cannot be, this legislation cannot be described as other than receding from the Berman Amendment and that principle in American law, which does not, by the way, did not emerge uh, from the brow of Representative Berman in 1988, but was, but was predicated on a much earlier principle of First Amendment law established in 1965 by the United States Supreme Court in the case Postmaster versus, or Lamont versus Postmaster General, which said that the American people have a right, a First Amendment right of access to foreign propaganda. At first, it may be remarkable or strike one as odd to hear that, but that's because the proper relationship between government and citizen in the United States is that the citizen decides what to be exposed to and what ideologies to embrace and consider and is always free to engage in expression, including across uh, international boundaries. That remains the prevailing constitutional law today, and it begs this question. How could it be that Congress should be working hard to, uh, to devise a means to circumvent that principle, that prevailing principle of the First Amendment against the use of a particular means of expression by 170 million, million Americans. And isn't it ironic that the technical advisors in the construction of this legislation to design it so that it can get around le legislation challenges, including isolating litigation challenges to 180 days and only in the Court of Appeals of the District of Columbia, those technical advisors are the same folks at the Department of Justice who devised that plan to embed agents of the Department of Justice and other federal agencies with, with social media platforms in the United States to restrict what Americans could say online. Mr. Speaker, America confronts a grave challenge in China, and it will not prevail by becoming more like it. I yield. The gentleman from Kentucky reserves, I now recognize the gentlewoman from Washington. Mr. Speaker, I, I yield 30 seconds to the gentleman from Kentucky, Mr. Guthrie. The gentleman from Kentucky is recognized. Thank, thank for you, Mr. 30 Speaker. Seconds. I want to emphasize this bill does not ban TikTok. It simply would require the Chinese Communist Party affiliated ByteDance to sell TikTok and divest their interests. I was asked, does this just affect TikTok? And no, it's any foreign adversary or any app that is owned, controlled, or unduly influenced by any foreign adversary. We must protect our national security and help keep America's private data out of the hands of our foreign adversaries. I urge support of this bill, and I yield back. 
I reserve. The gentlewoman reserves, and I'll recognize the gentleman from New Jersey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll yield two minutes now to the gentlewoman from California, Ms. Eshu, a member of the committee. The gentlewoman is recognized for two minutes. I thank the ranking member of the Energy and Commerce Committee. And Mr. Speaker, I rise today in support of H.R. 7521, the Protecting Americans from Foreign Adversary Controlled Applications Act. This bill will ensure the divestiture of TikTok from its People's Republic of China controlled parent company, ByteDance. And why is it essential for Congress to do this? Because the PRC controls ByteDance, and this presents a serious national security threat to our country. TikTok has 170 million plus US users, and it collects tremendous amounts of sensitive data. They also collect substantial background data that may be proprietary, which may only be available to TikTok. The national security law of the PRC requires all Chinese organizations to, quote, support, assist, and cooperate with national intelligence efforts. Under this law, ByteDance could be compelled by the Chinese government to provide data on every American TikTok user. They can weaponize this data to exploit and manipulate Americans through surveillance and disinformation. This legislation separates TikTok's data, algorithms, and source code from ByteDance. And importantly, this bill does not ban TikTok, something I do not support. I support divestiture because our first and most important responsibility as members of Congress is to defend our Constitution and defend the United States of America. The bill would also give Americans secure ownership of their data, including posts, photos, and videos, and give this administration and future administrations the authority to respond to future national security threats. For all these reasons, I urge all colleagues to vote for this legislation in the name of our national security. The the gentleman from New Jersey's time has expired. I now recognize the gentleman from Kentucky. I yield four minutes to my good friend from Georgia, Ms. Marjorie Taylor Greene. The representative is recognized for four minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today as the only member of Congress that has ever been banned by social media. In, on January 2nd of 2022, Twitter banned me banned my personal account on which I was campaigning for Congress, raising money, and using my free speech to inform the voters in my district they can vote for me. This was not by a company owned by China. This was by American-owned Twitter. This came on the heels of our own United States government working with big tech and working with social media companies to censor and ban Americans' free speech. I believe that this bill can cause future problems. It's opening Pandora's box, and I'm opposed to this bill. Most Americans don't trust the United States government because of our experience dealing with it. Never forget that the United States government also was the one that provided the Russia hoax to Americans. It also worked to ban Americans' free speech. It also has worked in so many ways to illegally warrantless spy on Americans through FISA. If we wanted to be serious about stopping a foreign adversary, if we wanted to be serious about stopping China, we would stop China from buying our U.S. farmland. We would, we would raise up our American energy independence. We would also stop the Green New Deal and not rely on China, who owns and operates 85% of the battery market worldwide. There are dangers that lie ahead in this. This is really about controlling Americans' data. And if we cared about Americans' data, then we would stop the sale of Americans' data universally, not just with China. There's some further issues. This is a Pandora's box. 
What's to stop Congress or the United States government in the future from forcing the sale of another social media company claiming that it's protecting Americans' data from foreign adversaries? I think we could see in the future another Russia, 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 and possibly force the sale of X, as many members in this body claim that Elon Musk is altering the algorithms of X. By the way, it was Elon Musk's purchase of X that restored my social media account on Twitter and allowed me to have my free speech back on Twitter. There's also members of this body, the Democrats are claiming that election meddling can happen on social media. Well, we can never forget Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook. We can never forget the election meddling that happened there. And by the way, American-owned Facebook and Instagram is where most of the garbage, like the gender lies and the woke lies, exist. Many Americans and many teenagers believe awful things, and they don't just see them on TikTok, they see them on Facebook and Instagram too. I don't think this will accomplish what the goal is to accomplish. So there's other concerns I think here, is that when the government moves into forcing the sale of, of uh, TikTok, who is going to buy it? That's the question that we should be asking. Who is going to buy it? Who will be the next to control the data of over 170 million Americans? Are we going to trust Mark Zuckerberg to control their data? I certainly don't. By the way, most of the time, my posts on Facebook are shadow banned, and I certainly don't have the reach on that social media account. I think that there's many other ways to protect data, and I think this, this body is capable of it. If the gentlelady's time it. has expired. I oppose the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The gentleman from Kentucky reserves. I recognize the gentlelady from Washington. Mr. Speaker, I yield one and a half minutes to the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Roy. The gentleman from Kentucky is recognized. Uh, Texas. From Texas is re uh, recognized for a minute and a half. I thank the speaker. We are in a cold war with China. And some of my colleagues want to ignore this fact. We have legislation before us that is 12 pages long. The bill is not a ban. It forces foreign adversaries, including Chinese communists, to divest. The bill is not a bill of attainder. It's prospective, not retrospective. The bill does not violate the First Amendment. It focuses on conduct, not content. It requires both being controlled by a foreign adversary and conduct that itself is espionage. If you just had one alone, it might be debatable, as the gentleman from North Carolina or Senator Paul note, in that it might protect Americans' rights to seek out and obtain foreign propaganda. But again, that is not this case because we have and have as a trigger in the bill demonstrated national security conduct harm. To be clear, we've properly taken action at the device layer by banning Huawei and ZTE spy gear. We've taken action at the carrier level, prohibiting China Mobile and China Telecom from connecting to our networks based on a determination they are controlled by the CCP and a national security threat. We now need to take action at the application level when malign CCP control has been demonstrated, lest we render meaningless our past actions to protect the United States of America. We should ban CHICOM ownership of our farmland or drug manufacturing, but we should fight them here and ban the foreign ownership and control of American data and stop apologizing for the Chinese communists. I yield back. I reserve. The gentlewoman from Washington reserves, and I'll recognize the gentleman from Kentucky. I yield one minute to my friend on the other side of the aisle, Mr. Garcia from California. Gentlemen's recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I have enormous respect for the efforts of my colleagues to focus on security and data protection, and I share many of their concerns. But I disagree with this approach and bill that could impact 170 million Americans who use TikTok. One third of all U.S. adults use the app, and millions of entrepreneurs and small business owners use the platform to support their family. And yes, just like every other social media platform, there is misinformation and privacy concerns on TikTok, and I share those. However, it's important that we don't treat TikTok differently than other platforms. If we're going to address this issue, we've got to take the same approach to all social media platforms. We can't just single out one. Now, I join many of my colleagues and the ACLU
you in voicing concern over the freedom of expression. Now, I'm a strong supporter of ensuring that TikTok remains an open marketplace, and there's no guarantee in this bill that there won't be an interruption of service that could lead to an end of this app. I don't think we fully appreciate the impact this is going to have, and for that, I'm a strong no. Thank you, and I yield back. Gentleman from Kentucky Reserve. Reserves. I recognize the gentlewoman from Washington. Mr. Speaker, I yield 30 seconds to the gentleman from Indiana, Dr. Bouchon. The gentleman is recognized for 30 seconds. Mr. Speaker, one of the most important duties of the Constitution assigns to Congress is to protect the American people and to safeguard our national security. After hearing from national security experts last week, it is clear the prolific use of media platforms controlled by the Chinese Communist Party and other foreign adversaries poses a danger to our country. I am grateful to my bipartisan colleagues for moving this legislation, showing we will take action to protect the American people, their personal data, and security from foreign interference and manipulation. We took an oath to do so. Thank you, and I yield back. The gentle lady reserves. I now recognize the gentleman from Kentucky. I now yield uh, one minute to my friend on the other side of the aisle from California, Ms. Kamlager Dove. The gentle lady is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to oppose H.R. 7521. Banning TikTok is an insufficient Band-Aid solution to the genuine national security concerns the app raises and exposes. The bill seriously undermines civil liberties by essentially banning a platform that 150 million Americans use to engage in free speech and expression. A statewide TikTok ban has already been paused by a federal judge on First Amendment grounds. Even without TikTok, the PRC could still be able to conduct influence operations on other social media platforms and obtain sensitive U.S. user data through hacking or data brokers. Finally, this bill would greatly expand the executive's authority to ban tech companies with zero congressional oversight. I cannot sign a blank check to some future president who would easily and dangerously weaponize this legislation to profit and silence. Creatives, artists, content creators, and businesses in my district will get caught in the crossfire of this bill and deserve better than federal overreach as a substitute for a thoughtful and incisive solution Ladies, time to this has complicated expired. national security challenge. Thank you. I yield back. Reserve. Gentleman from Kentucky Reserves, I recognize a gentlewoman from Washington. Mr. Speaker, I yield 40 seconds to the gentlewoman from Iowa, Ms. Henson. The ladies recognized for 40 seconds. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today in support of this simple bill. It forces TikTok to cut ties with the CCP or lose American users. The day after we introduced our bill, TikTok went into panic mode. They lied to their users, saying Congress was going to ban TikTok using young kids as political pawns. TikTok's growth stunt proved our point. What if on election day, TikTok sent out an alert saying our elections were canceled? We must act now. Today, Today we're sending a message to the CCP that we are going to deflate the 140 million spy balloons that they have installed on American phones. We must act and pass this bill today. Thank you. I yield back. The gentlelady reserves. Reserve. I now recognize the gentleman from Kentucky. Reserve. Gentleman from Kentucky reserves. I now recognize the gentlelady from Washington. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to yield one minute to the gentlewoman from Florida, Ms. Kamek. The gentle lady from Florida is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today we take a stand against the Chinese Communist that. Party and their efforts to turn content creators in America into foot soldiers for the CCP. You know, we aren't banning a company as the high-paid lobbyist for ByteDance, which is owned by China, would lead you to believe. We aren't infringing on constitutionally protected speech or growing the size of government. All we're saying is break up with the Chinese Communist Party. As a constitutional conservative, I don't want my government or big tech to have unfettered access to my private data. So why in the hell would we want and allow the Chinese Communist Party to have access to our private data? The CCP is an adversary of the United States and this legislation narrowly, thoughtfully, and directly addresses the national security threat and protecting Americans' data and by extension, their First Amendment rights. Because let us not pretend for one second that TikTok is not infringing on our amendment, our First Amendment rights. 
I would say that this bill, as Representative Roy from Texas said, this bill is about conduct, not General content. General time has expired. Conduct, not content. And there is no restriction mentioned on content the in this bill. The gentlelady's time has but expired. But I will mention, Does Mr. Speaker, lady I will from mention Washington that the espionage is not covered or protected as one of the, the five tenets of the First Amendment. The gentlelady is no longer Amendment. recognized. The gentle uh, woman from Washington, you have a minute and three quarters time left, and I now recognize the gentleman from Kentucky. Uh, right there. I'd like to now yield one minute to my good friend from Arizona, Mr. Schweikert. The gentleman is recognized for one minute. Um, and thank you, Mr. Speaker Pro Tem, and to my friends, I actually am about to try to make everyone mad. Yay! I actually believe data is a private property right. It belongs to you as an American citizen. The problem with our design here, it's really well-meaning, but it doesn't get at the structural problem. So you have an entity over here, they divest. What makes them not then take the data, sell it to a data broker, and it gets washed and ends up still in the bad actor's hands. You gotta understand, there's even articles out in this week of even our own three-letter agencies buying their data now from data brokers instead of doing the tracking. We need to think dramatically more globally. Your data is a private property right. That will be the only way we end up protecting ourselves from bad actors and sometimes even our own selves. time has expired. And with that, I yield back. The gentleman from Kentucky Reserves, I believe he has three minutes, three and a half minutes available. And I'll recognize the gentlewoman from Washington. Mr. Speaker, I yield 30 seconds to the gentleman from Michigan, Mr. Wahlberg. The gentleman is recognized for 30 seconds. Mr. Speaker, last March, when I asked the, uh, about America's data being stored on and accessed by China, TikTok CEO stated under oath that it was not accessible by the CCP. However, this statement was a lie. As her own internal recording said, everything is seen in China. H.R. 7521 gives TikTok and similar apps six months to divest from their parent company, ByteDance. It's their choice. TikTok needs to decide whether they value their users or their ties to the Chinese Communist Party more. Simple as that. Vote for this bill. I yield back. The gentleman yields and the gentle lady from Washington yields. Reserves. Uh, gentleman from Kentucky will be recognized. I reserve. The gentleman from Kentucky reserves. And I'll recognize the gentle lady from Washington. I reserve. Gentle lady from Washington reserves. Is, is, um, well, is the gentle lady prepared to close? I'm prepared to close. You, you have no other speakers? I have one more speaker, and we'd like to close. So I'm going to wait. I'm going to reserve until you are ready to, um, until your time has expired. <laughs> You're, well, are yes, you prepared sir. to close? Um, I'm prepared to close. Okay. It's the so gentle lady has no further speakers. I the gentle lady speaker. from Washington has the right to close. Yes. Okay. All right. I'd I'll like close. to close. The gentleman from Kentucky is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I know the other side is sincere, and we've not questioned that here today, and I won't question their sincerity. I, in fact, I think they've identified at least three problems that we have in America. Moral decay of our society, invasion of Americans' privacy, and our competitiveness with China. But in this case, their cure is worse than the diseases. You know, there are ways to, to get at these root problems. We just haven't taken it upon ourselves to address those root problems with, with actual legislative solutions that have been put forth here in Congress. For instance, Mr. Warren Davidson's The Fourth Amendment is Not for Sale Act would put a strong stake in the ground to protect Americans' privacy, whether it's from our own government or some foreign governments. That is the kind of thing we need. We need warrants in the FISA program you shouldn't be able to, our government shouldn't be able to spy on Americans without a warrant, yet they are. Let's bring that to the floor and vote on it. These are the kind of cures we need, not the bill that's offered here today, 
The bill that's offered here today, even though I know it's offered genuinely, it could also be named the Facebook Protection and Enhancement Act. Because it's not the American people are going to benefit most from this. It will be Facebook. Their stock is going to go up if this bill should pass the Senate. Now, what are some ways that we could improve this bill? Well, it should at least have a sunset. I mean, that's the only reason we're able to debate whether FISA uh, should have warrants in it, because it sunsets. And what have we observed? FISA's been abused. That's my concern with this TikTok ban. It will be abused. If it's just banning TikTok and ByteDance and, and uh, copies of that, why does it need to be 13 pages long? And I know they say it doesn't ban it, it forces divestiture of the company. This sounds like when American companies try to do business in third world countries and a dictator says, well, you can do business here, you just gotta give me your company and now you can continue to do business. We wouldn't let another country take over Ford Motor Company for selling Ford cars in their, in their country. Yet that's what we're wanting to do here. And again, you know, this, this is a cure that is worse than the disease. Who's going to be prosecuted by this bill? Is it ByteDance or TikTok? Will they be taken to court? No. I mean, they're the target of this, but how do you elicit or effect a ban on them? by prosecuting Americans. The only way you can ban TikTok and the other companies from being here is to say what this bill says, which is we will bring civil action, the government will bring a civil action suit against you if you so much as host them here. If you have an app store that allows them to be here, you are an American or an American company and you will be the target of this bill. Those are the only people who can be pursued under this bill. And I know it's in, in order to go after TikTok, or so they say. Well, I would just close by saying that, you know, we're sitting here with phones made in China. We're wearing suits made in China. We drove cars here with chips that are made in China. And they're our foreign adversary. And by golly, we're going to do something about it. What are we going to do? We're going to tell Americans they can't put a piece of software on their computer. They can't go to certain websites that the president designates. So I urge my colleagues to oppose this well-intentioned bill because it will have bad consequences, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back the balance of his time, and I'll recognize the gentlelady from Washington. Mr. Speaker, I yield as, uh, such time as remains to the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Crenshaw. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The gentleman has one minute and 15 seconds. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to address all of my uh, colleagues who I think are confused about the First Amendment, confused about the nature of TikTok, and confused about the intentions of the Chinese Communist Party. Let me explain this really simple. TikTok is owned by ByteDance. ByteDance is in China. And when you're in China, you have to do whatever the Chinese Communist Party says you have to do. That's according to the National Intelligence Law passed in 2017. If they want you to spy for them, you will spy for them. That's how that works. They have a board member from the Chinese Communist Party on ByteDance. You wouldn't allow a radio tower owned by the Chinese to be put up right in the middle of Washington, D.C., and then allow it to just put out Chinese propaganda. You'd probably complain about that. That's exactly what TikTok can be used for, because millions of Americans are addicted to it. They see it, and the Chinese can, can can absolutely manipulate those algorithms. The First Amendment does not give the Chinese Communist Party the right to American data or the right to manipulate the minds of Americans. That would be a really weird interpretation of the First Amendment. The primary counterarguments to this bill seem to be as shallow as, you know, well, it doesn't do everything I want and Facebook's really mean and I don't want them to make money. So what, then that means you owe Chinese access to all of our data and access to manipulate the minds of Americans? I don't think so. This is a very specific bill, very specifically tailored. It does not harm American companies or American individuals. You know it, you gotta read it, pass this bill. And I yield back. All time for a debate is completed. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass the bill H.R. 7521 as amended, those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative. Mr. Speaker. 
What purpose does the gentleman from Kentucky rise? I request the yeas and nays. The gentleman from Kentucky requests the yeas and nays. Those favoring a vote by the yeas and nays will rise. A sufficient number having risen, the yeas and nays are ordered. Members will record their votes by electronic device. This is a 15-minute vote.
I do. On this vote, the yeas are 352, the nays are 65, one present, two-thirds being in the affirmative. The rules are suspended. The bill is passed. And without the objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, the unfinished business is the question on suspending the rules and pass Senate 1278, which the clerk will report by title. Senate 1278, an act to designate the federal building located at 985 Michigan Avenue in Detroit, Michigan, as the Rosa Parks Federal Building and for other purposes. The question is, will the bill suspend the rules and pass the bill? So many as are in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative, the rules are suspended, the bill is passed, and without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. Correct. For what purpose does the gentleman from New York seek recognition? Madam Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that when the House adjourns today, it adjourn to meet at 11 a.m. on Friday, March 15, 2024. And further, when the House adjourns on that date, it adjourned to meet at noon on Tuesday, March 19, 2024, for morning hour debate and 2 p.m. for legislative business. Without objection. Is it is the microphone on my The House will be in order. Members, please take your conversations to the rear or the side gallery. The chair will now entertain requests for one minute speeches. Purpose does the gentlewoman from Arizona seek recognition? I ask unanimous consent to address the House for one minute. Without objection, the gentlewoman is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to recognize someone whose service will be felt by future generations of Arizonans. Arizona Senate. 
President Warren Peterson. Senator Peterson's service to the people of Arizona began in 2012 when he was elected to the Arizona House of Representatives. Throughout his time in the House, he served as chairman of the Judiciary Committee and Majority Leader. Once his time in the House came to an end, Senator Peterson was elected to the Arizona Senate, where he became president in 2023. Under his leadership, Arizona has accomplished school choice, passed tax cuts for families across the state, and worked hard to enforce border security in the face of opposition from the left. During my own time in the Arizona House of Representatives, I was lucky enough to serve alongside President Peterson, where he was a respected colleague and a friend. Peterson's service to Arizona could not be overstated, and his leadership is appreciated by all Arizonans. Thank you, and I yield back. For what purpose does the gentleman from New Jersey seek recognition? Ask you to ask the Senator to address the House for one minute, revise and extend my remarks. Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Gentlemen, um, suspend. The House will be in order. Please take your conversations to the rear or the side galleries. Gentlemen, proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to celebrate the Eagle Scout project of Michael Casteria. Michael Casteria is a boy scout from Union, New Jersey, and he wanted to upgrade the almost 300-year-old Caldwell Parsonage. The Caldwell Parsonage was the home of the Reverend James Caldwell, a strong patriot supporter during the American Revolution. The original Caldwell Parsonage was burned by loyalist mobs in 1780. Later that year, Caldwell's wife, Hannah, was killed by British soldiers during the Battle of Connecticut Farms. The current Caldwell Parsonage was built in 1782 and added to the National Registry of Historic Places in 1982. Michael Castillo wanted to preserve the, that history for his Eagle Scout project. So he researched various artifacts in the parsonage and he created more accurate exhibit labels for each of the items found. Congratulations, Michael. You have made a valuable contribution to the a historic location in this country's great fight in the revolution. And with that, I yield back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Tennessee seek recognition? I ask unanimous consent to address the House for one minute and to revise and extend my remarks. Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, prices for everyday goods continued to climb due to the economic policies of the Biden administration. The latest Consumer Price Index report was up 3.2 percent from last year. I rise in support of hardworking families I represent in Tennessee who are making hard choices to stay afloat. If they're having to tighten their belts, the federal government should do the same. President Biden's answer is to raise taxes even more, but we don't have a revenue problem. We have, in Washington, a spending problem. In fiscal year 2022, the federal government collected $850 billion more in tax revenue than the year before. Yet the federal government spent $1.4 trillion more than we brought in. Last year, the federal government spent $1.7 trillion more than it collected. That's just one of many reasons why I am opposed to the President's $7.3 trillion budget. We cannot continue spending more money that we don't have. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I yield back. For what purpose does the gentlewoman from Ohio seek recognition? Without objection, the gentlewoman is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I rise to recognize the Rotary Club of Barberton as Ohio's 13th Congressional District Champion of the Week. The Rotary Club of Barberton has been a staple in the city of Barberton for over 100 years, providing life-changing services and investing in the community and its members.